Once upon a time, in the days following the Great Flood, the earth was repopulated by the descendants of Noah's sons. The people were united in language and purpose, and they settled in the land of Shinar. In this land, they decided to build a city and a tower that would reach the heavens. This tower was to be a monument to their own greatness, a symbol of their power and achievement. They named it Babel. The bricks they used for construction were baked hard in the sun, and they used tar as mortar. The tower began to rise, its shadow stretching across the land, a testament to the people's ambition and unity. Word of the tower reached the heavens, and God looked upon it. He saw not a monument of achievement, but a symbol of pride and defiance. The people had forgotten their place, and in their unity, they sin against God. God said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So God descended upon the tower and confused their language. Where once they had spoken as one, now they spoke in a multitude of tongues, unable to understand each other. The construction of the tower ceased. The people, no longer able to communicate, were scattered across the earth, each group going its own way according to its new language. The city was left unfinished, and the tower stood as a stark reminder of their hubris. The once unified people were now divided, their languages as diverse as the lands they settled in. The tower, once a symbol of unity and ambition, was now a symbol of division and confusion. It was a testament to the consequences of pride and the limits of human ambition in the face of divine will. And thus, the tower was named Babel, for it was there that the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This story serves as a reminder that unity and ambition can lead to great achievements, but they must be tempered with humility and respect for Jesus. For in the end, it is not our monuments that define us, but our actions and our relationship with God.